If you need to share specific data with people on your team and you don't want everyone to have access, look no further than this video. Here I'm going to be breaking down exactly how to set up your Airtable interfaces so that people see only the things that you want them to see and they don't get bogged down by all the other work that will clutter up their workspace. Instead, when they log in, they see their own specific stuff, their own projects, their own tasks. However you've structured your data, this way they only see their stuff in their interface. And I'm gonna show you how you can still build an admin view that allows super users to see everything. So if learning more about limiting what people have access to in their Airtable interface is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's our mission here to help you unlock the full potential of Airtable and the related no-code tools in this space. Now, before we get into the heart of the video, again, we're gonna be talking about user permissions for interfaces, but I first wanna invite you to join me for some templates. If you're new to Airtable or if you've been using it for a while and you're looking for inspiration, we've built five key templates that are the cornerstone of almost all the database builds that we do for our clients. We're talking about things like invoices and payments and project tracking and task tracking, the five most common things that we are always solving for and we're giving away for free. You can sign up at gapconsulting.io slash templates. But without further ado, let's hop on into my screen and I'm going to show you how to build these interfaces so that they filter down for specific users when they log in. So first, some assumptions. Number one, I'm assuming that we're on a paid Airtable plan. Uh, when you are using a free plan, it's very limited, and so you're not gonna be able to get the functionality that you probably want out of Airtable. So consider that upgrade if you aren't already there. Now, the other thing that you'll need is to understand that every person that you share an interface with will be a charged user on your account. So unless you're giving them read-only interface access, but if you have commenters or editor access that you're sharing on the interface, then you will be incurring a charge for them on your Airtable account, even if they already pay for Airtable in a different place. Airtable pricing can be a little bit uh, difficult to understand if you're new to it. So go ahead and check out our Airtable pricing guide video if you have questions about that. So we're assuming though that you're on a paid plan and that you accept that you're going to incur charges every time you share with people in your organization. Now we need to talk about the way that we set this up, the data schema layer. So here in this example, I'm sharing meetings. I've got these different meetings and I wanna share them with people on our team. Note the difference here. I'm not sharing them externally with the people that uh, we held the meeting with. So I'm not sharing it with the client or outside stakeholders. I'm only sharing with people in the organization that have Airtable access. So how do we build it? Well, number one, we have the data that we care about. And in this case, that's meetings. So we've got all the different meetings. The meetings have titles. They have summaries, start date, duration, end date. You get the idea, right? And then we have the participants. We're linking to participants here. And this is our second table, which is effectively users. So this says participants, but in fact, it's linking to the users table. Now over here on users, uh, we could name this anything, right? It could be people, it could be contacts, but I want to highlight a few things that we're going to uh, really draw our attention to. The first one is, are they an internal team member or are they a client? This is going to matter because obviously we're gonna hold meetings with uh, clients and we wanna link them here. Uh, so there might be a reason for doing that if the client, if we're doing a project for a client, for example. Now, again, we're not sharing these meetings with our clients. We're only sharing them internally. So we have to make sure that people are labeled appropriately. And in fact, we can see just by looking at the email addresses that only Gareth and Sarah in this example are internal users. So we'll go ahead and change these folks to clients now. So then you can see the linked meetings. And so far, Gareth and Sarah don't have any meetings linked to them. And of course, this is going to be important. This is the reciprocal of that link relationship where the user connects to the meeting and the meeting connects to the user. And only when we have assigned people to meetings will they be able to view it. Now, again, you could use this same methodology 
in a number of ways. You could have tasks that only certain people will need access to. And so you link those people to those tasks. And, you know, you could have projects and things like that. We're going to explain how that data rolls through. But this is very important. We need to have the Airtable user here. And we can add this user field type, and it is the Airtable user, right? Now, a couple of things to note. If you're adding the person here in the data layer, that means that they have access to the workspace or to the database, which is basically saying that they do not have limited access on the interface. Think about sharing the different permissioning within Airtable kind of in three different buckets. Number one is sharing admin access to the workspace. If somebody has access to the workspace, any database that's built in the workspace is going to be uh, granted access to that person immediately. Now, secondly, the next layer down, you can share access to specific databases. And that's when we share at that database layer. So if you're in the data component here in Airtable and then you share, you're sharing access to the back end, to the data. Now, the third and the most limited view or way to share is to share the interface. So you would click here to interfaces and then share the interface layer. If you share only at the interface layer and assign people at the interface side of things, then you will ensure that they do not have the database layer. But right here, Gareth and Sarah both have been added at the database layer for the testing of this video. So you've got the Airtable user, important to understand all the rules that we just went through there. And then this user is linking to the meetings. And then on the meeting side of things, we need to add a lookup field for the internal users. So we're looking at the participants and we're looking in and bringing in the Airtable user. And the reason for this is this field, the Airtable user field type, is what the interface will use to filter data. So basically when somebody logs into Airtable, it knows who they are. They're logged into their account. And so when I'm logged in as me on an interface, I'm going to be logged in, Airtable, can know that it's me and then anything where my user is showing up on that record, that's how we can apply that filter. So since we're looking to meetings and we wanna filter down the meetings here, we need to make sure to bring in that lookup field. And as soon as Gareth, the Gareth record is added to a meeting, that is gonna filter in here. So let's add Gareth as a participant to this meeting. And immediately you see that the lookup field comes through. Now we can also add Sarah and we're gonna bring in Sarah's Airtable user as well. But maybe only Gareth needs access to this particular meeting and maybe only Sarah needs access to this particular meeting. So you can see how we can uh, start bringing in the Airtable user very quickly. All we need to do is link to the appropriate participant. And in this case, Gareth and Sarah are linked to one and then Gareth has two additional and Sarah has two additional. Great. So let's assume that when Gareth logs in to the interface, he needs to see, or I need to see, only the meetings that I was assigned to, that I was a participant for. So in order to do this, we build out our interface. Make sure you go into edit pages here. So we need to go into edit the pages and we click into whatever we want to limit. In this case, it's this list view. I'm currently seeing all five of the different meetings, but I only want to see three only the three that I'm assigned to. And the way we do this is applying a filter here. So we apply a filter to this entire page and we're just gonna say, hey, that internal team users field that we created, we wanna make sure that it is current user. Current user is the way that we say, whoever's logged in right now to Airtable, we want them to see their information. So I set it to current user and immediately, because I'm logged in as me, you can see that it was filtered down to three different meetings and not all five. Now, when I publish this, I will only see my meetings, those three that I was you know, assigned to as a participant. And the reason behind that is because I'm logged in as me. But back here, if we go back to edit pages, we can preview this as other people as well and confirm that it is in fact different for others. So if I switch over and impersonate Sarah and I preview as her, you see that the meetings changed. And that's because the meetings that she's assigned to are very different than the meetings I'm assigned to. And so just like that, when she logs in now, she'll see this. And this little preview toggle here is a great way for you to impersonate different people and ensure that the data is pulling through as you would expect. Now, 
this is pretty easy stuff. Like Sarah can comment here and, uh, you know, drop a quick test. But of course, even though I'm impersonating her, when I start typing right now, it's still me. Like I can't uh, impersonate her in Airtable and comment on things as her. But that being said, this is a great way for us to collaborate because, you know, Sarah and I were both assigned to the same meeting. So maybe there's something in this meeting that is relevant. We're working together and uh, I need to chat with her about that. We can do it right here. So this is a fantastic way for you to limit what people see, make sure that they only see the stuff that they're assigned to and you can drive from there. Now, an important couple of things that we need to round out. We should actually make sure that we build a user's interface or an admin type interface where we can assign the different Airtable users. Because remember that I said that we don't want to assign people at the data layer. We need to actually assign them at the interface layer. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that we have a way to do that. So inside of the interface, we can make it so that we can expand this. I have some deleted fields here from this example, which we don't need to worry about, but we can leave preview mode, uh, quickly get rid of these fields, and uh, most importantly, bring in the Airtable user that we had uh, been pointing to at the users table. So here I will uh, go ahead and bring in that new component, Airtable user. Make sure to make this editable. And now what we can do is invite people to join our interface. And then once they've accepted, we find them here and we can assign them. So it's pretty simple to do this. Once we've published this up, down in the uh, bottom corner, we can see share in the bottom left. And we can say, oh, okay, here are the people that have access. We can invite guest users. We can invite other people using links. Uh, we can manage access for all the different people who can see this interface. So we can choose what different interfaces they're going to have access to. In this case, we might want to only share meetings and not the users table. This could be more of an admin, right? So this way we have control over how we're inviting people. And then once they accept to meetings, we can add them to the user's component back here, as you saw. So all I have to do is bring in that new Airtable user once they've accepted the invitation to join the interface. Now, the other thing that I mentioned at the top of the video is making sure that admin users can see everything. And so, yes, they can always go back into the data layer, but you might also choose to build an admin view that kind of has everything. And so in order to do this pretty quick and easy, all we have to do is go back to editing the pages in the interface and I can go to meetings and just duplicate this meetings list. I'll check on it right here and duplicate it and I'll bring it into users and I'll rename the users here and I'll call this admin panel. And now we've got a copy of the meetings list and I could say something like master or all. And here I'm going to remove the filter. So we duplicated this, right? So it still has the filter. We can get rid of this entirely uh, and just remove the filter altogether. And now you might additionally choose to bring in a filter up here for Airtable users so that if you need as an admin person to check on somebody else and see what they can see, you can now use that dropdown. So once we publish this, you can see now the updates that have been made. Here I am in the meetings list master file or master interface, and I can filter down to just see Sarah's meetings, or I could filter instead to see my meetings. And then alternatively, when everybody else logs in and they go to meeting list, they're not going to see admin panel unless we share it with them. And so the normal users are only going to see this list and it's already filtered down for their specific needs. As you can see, this is a great way for you to lock down what people have access to when they log in to your Airtable interface. And I hope you got a ton of value from the video. Now, if you did, we would love it if you could subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. Of course, it really helps with the algorithms. And if there are questions that we did not answer, feel free to swing by our website. We have a ton of available resources for you. That's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in. And in the meantime, keep on building.